And Brady just kind of looks at you, and his eyes go wide. And he just stares at you for a moment. And before you get even an opportunity to say anything, a glowing blue AI bot leaps from the metal catwalk above and slams upon the metal floor of the docking bay in a three-point stance. <laughs> Slowly rising... To its full height begins to call out to both of you stop right there do not run do not resist running or resisting will only result in personal injury and or death come peacefully and no one will suffer bodily harm xantha would like to see you both Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I would kind of look at Brady and just go, do you, do you want to make a run for it? You can see he's sweating already. Uh, <laughs> you, you got two options. Run or go with. Decide. And as you say that, before you have an opportunity to react, you hear the resounding boom of a shotgun blast come from immediately behind the AI unit. The robot is peppered with shotgun beads as blue and gold sparks begin to shoot out from its damaged mechanics. Parts of its thick armored covering seem to be shattered and broken as pieces fall to the floor beneath it. As its blue glow starts to flicker inconsistently in and out, it slowly turns around to see if it can see its attackers. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our first session of Death in Space RPG Combat. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, for those of you who are watching so far, this will be our first like run through at this new initiative type system. Initiative works a little differently in this game. Basically, the first person to make a hostile move towards another target gets the first initiative. So, the person who shotgun blast just went off took the first initiative in this combat. And that person gets to decide who goes next. So, all of a sudden, as you guys look over the shoulders, Devlin, you see Cameron in his trench coat <laughs> and red spiky hair holding a smoking shotgun from about 15 to 20 feet behind the blue AI bot. And he's gritting his teeth and <laughs> as he's holding the shotgun. It looks like he scored a direct hit and severely damaged this AI bot. But then another female individual wearing kind of... Um, the same kind of goggles that Cameron has on kind of pops up also wearing a long brown trench coat pulls out this sort of pistol looking gun device and points it at the blue AI bot and fires as well. That bullet like hits the side of like the head of the AI bot and sparks begin to shoot out from the side of the head as well. As you hear like bullet ricocheting uh, back behind you and you hear that sounds of bullets kind of ricocheting in here all of a sudden you hear like screams of panic as people were kind of like working around this area and people are just kind of hunkering down ducking behind boxes and crates and all kinds of things as you're in a refueling department and shots are ringing out um that woman's go just happened and then it becomes your turn 
Uh, I'm going to turn to Brady and say, we got to get out of here and just start looking around and start making my way out, kind okay. of jogging. Okay, I'm going to move possible. you guys to a new map and roll 20 so you can get an idea what you're dealing with here. Can you guys see that on roll 20? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to also let our uh, friends at home on YouTube get a chance to catch a glimpse of this as well. And I'm going to change the music to something a little bit more fitting. I like this one. That's a good one. <clears throat> okay, let me, uh, I gotta bring these two wonderful folks out onto the actual layer so you guys can see them. Turn down the music a little bit so it's not too overpowering. <laughs> so you just got set telling Brady that you got to make a run for it. What would you like to do? You basically have like a move of up to like 30 feet and some kind of action, something that you think you would do. I'm going to grab him by the collar, collar and throw him in front of me and push him. So that way I'm the last person. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to say, go, go, go and just start pushing them with the hopes that they take off before me um, and then seeing if there's anything I can steal from the AI, like the chip or something, just as extra insurance, I'm just gonna kind of like slow behind and try and look to see if there's anything I can grab intelligence wise. Okay, so you're gonna try to get like right up behind the AI as it turned around to face its attackers? Oh, is it? I thought it was down, wasn't it? No, it's still up. Oh, it's oh, then never it mind. It just looks badly um, damaged. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, we're we're gonna make a run for it, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna push him in front so he's a human shield. Okay. So you uh, here's what you're gonna have to do because Brady is going to um, there's gonna be a little natural resistance to Brady doing this. He doesn't want to be in front of you. He wants to be behind you. So you're gonna make a contested roll against Brady. This is gonna be adding your body score. All right. I'm using one of the new ones. I got a minus one, so I got a nine. Brady got a two, so you succeed. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, you grab Brady and kind of put him up in between yourself and the AI bot. And which direction are you going? Because I'm going to tell you on the map, I had to make some, uh, take some artistic liberties on the map. If you can see those two like areas that I made into makeshift stairwells, those are stairs that lead up to the catwalk that's above that I kind of used blue lines to represent on the map. Uh, we are going to swing down below the blue AI and try and swing wide since they're shooting a shotgun and that way it gets us out of the blast of the shotgun. Okay. So going south and kind of swinging like yeah, a you, J shape. You should have control of your token on that map. You can go and okay. uh, move it up to, uh, it would be up to six squares on the map. So wherever you think you would, you would go. And then I'll put Brady kind of wherever you stop. I'll put Brady in between you and the bot. That's kind of roughly six. Okay. So we'll put Brady right about there. As Brady's like, What's, what, what are you doing? We got to get out of here. Quick, <laughs> it froze up. Um, so it being your turn, Brady is still in this initiative order. And so is the blue bot. So you get to pick which one goes next. AI. You want the AI to go? Okay. Absolutely. The AI turns around and immediately is focused on Cameron. Because Cameron was the first person that, that attacked. And he rushes Cameron. Gets right up in front of him. It's actually going to try to take uh, the shotgun and just like slam it out of his hand. And that's a really good roll. A 16 plus 2. Uh, that that shotgun is pulled out of Cameron's hand and the AI just takes it and kind of throws it behind and it rolls across the floor skittering about, I don't know, uh, you can see probably like somewhere up about here is where it comes to rest. <clears throat> and that's what the AI does on its turn. So the AI 
it, it goes back to Brady. Brady's going to go. Um, Brady seeing the shotgun go across the floor. Are you holding, like, grappling Brady? Or are you just kind of guiding him? I would say guiding. I would I would have an initial good grip, but once he came with, I would loosen up. Okay. So he's going to try to make a break for the shotgun. And he runs to the shotgun. He's able to get there. And he picks it up. But he's afraid to fire because his friends are right in the blast radius of the shotgun. So he kind of shouts, to, Cameron, get out of the way! And that's, that's all he does on his turn. While this is happening, the rest of you, you're sitting in the safe confines of your vessel. <laughs> um, what would you guys be talking about right now? Play cards or something? Playing cards? Yeah, do we have cards? I don't even know. I don't know. Do your characters have cards? Would any of uh, Don would probably have cards? He's he's the avid gambler, right? Yeah, I left them at home. Oh <laughs> man, that really sucks. How long do you think we should wait? For Brady? Uh, for Deathland? Sorry. Yeah. Um, should we, we wait at couple, all? We can give him a couple minutes. It should be fine. He said he hired. Yeah. Him. Agree with that? Okay. He's very competent. So let, let's let him do his thing. True. Manta, are, are you awake? Oh, you... Yeah. What's up? Okay. Okay. How are we doing? I don't, I don't know. Just ch chilling, as the cool kids would say. Although yeah. this isn't a freezer. He's having so much fun over here waiting. This is like a ship. Home. True. <laughs> I guess we'll... I don't know. Eh, let's just wait a couple more minutes. I want to see what happens. Uh. I mean, if something happens, we'll know. We'll hear some shooting or something. Explosives. See someone that... <laughs> fly away. I like seeing things fly away. It's so interesting. Especially in space. Bodies get all crusty and cold. <laughs> so nice to look at. Are they alive or dead at that time? Oh, they're dead. I think they die within like the first six or seven seconds. The lack of air just makes all of your body parts inside explode. Very cool. I thought you were against killing people. Well, I was in the war once, so I killed people there. I guess. Very hard to remember things when you lived for so long. Oh, 30 or something years is a very long time. Did you used to throw people out in this base? Often? I mean, sometimes when I had to, I would throw people out in space and sometimes I kill them in pleasant ways for me, I guess. When you throw somebody in space, there's not really a lot of I don't know, excitement? It's a lot more fun to put a blade to somebody's mouth and just cut it up a little by piece by piece. Tooth by tooth. No, it takes know. two steps back. <laughs> 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 At that point, all of a sudden, some of the ship's uh, screens start to flicker to life. A holographic image also starts to uh, project as like a, almost like a holographic screen that just seems to pop up in the middle of the vessel. And you can see what seems to be some kind of very well put together uh, female individual with long hair, nicely combed either side. Sitting there, kind of like a suit, dressed very nice. Almost seems like a news anchor of some sort. Pops up onto the screens, all the screens of your vessel, and says, Um, this just in. Currently, we are locking down the refueling station. We apologize for this inconvenience and should have everything back in normal order relatively quickly. 
Thank you for your patience. And then the screens die out. Isn't that where... Oh yeah, of course. That's the, we were expecting this. They were going to get caught. But Should we God. just let them get caught? That was the plan. I mean, do, do we not want to follow that plan? But was it what supposed to be Devlin? so violent? Yeah, what about Devlin? They're supposed to take him, but not hurt him. Do you think they close the whole place up? It's a good sign? I don't think so. I mean, you only close places down if something big happens. Something big must have happened. Who knows? Maybe Devlin exploded all over the place. He could already be dead, yeah. Mm. One less people to feed. Well, um, I think somebody should go check on him. I'll go. Wait, wait, hold on. Before we go, <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> I've been doing this for the last two weeks. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm scared. I'm scared too. Uh, uh, oh, no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go. Ah. It took me half an hour to, to make it and two hours to do this. Like, oh. oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, nice. What's it made out of? Um, um, I don't know. I <laughs> some kind of metal? <laughs> oh, so I could do some damage. Yeah. I could do something. <laughs> We'll see what ah, that is impressive. I love it. <laughs> nice. He's got his actual metal staff that he welded from last time. That's incredible. Um, mm -hmm. As you guys are having this conversation, we segue back to the refueling station. So we're going to do this a little bit, uh, a couple of times tonight, where we go back and forth between you guys. So back here. Oh, I hit the exit on the wrong music. I apologize, friends. There we go. Now it makes sense. <laughs> We're back to the room where all this uh, started taking place, the refueling station chamber. And Cameron, taking heed from Brady, runs... Actually sees you, Devlin. Starts running in your direction. Just kind of sprints in that direction. Um, and at that point, uh, Devlin, it'll go to your turn. Uh, I'm gonna look back at Brady and like see that he just went and grabbed the shotgun look over see cameron come running towards me and i just yell at cameron what are you doing we got to get out of here and then i'm just going to kind of run behind and take cover behind like this little mess thing right here whatever it is and just kind of hide but still i don't want to leave the group because then it's a little suspicious yeah yeah i still want to linger around a little bit <clears throat> okay got it at that point um you get to decide who goes next so far, we, we got Brady, we got the blue AI, and this uh, woman, uh, Kazra, up here at the top. We're going to go with Brady. Brady. Okay. Brady's kind of looking. He's still hesitant to fire the shotgun, so he decides to try to get a better angle. So he runs up here behind, uh, next to this box, leans up against the crate, pulls the shotgun up, and goes... Boom, and takes a fire firing of like a 10 foot shot right here at the blue AI. Um, here's what he got. Unfortunately, even being that close, the AI seems he pulls it up. The AI ducks and most of the beads miss as the you can hear the ricocheting beads like bouncing off of the metal grating stairs behind you. You can hear some of them hit multiple things. And you can hear people around the fueling station are gasping and go <gasps> as, as this stuff is taking place. 
um, Brady then is going to allow uh, Kazra to go. And she's going to just kind of pull up this pistol once again while this uh, blue AI seems to be occupied. And takes another shot at the, uh, at the AI. She better not roll really bad. She rolled bad, but not bad enough. Uh, so this bullet ricochets off the shoulder of this bot. The bullet, you can hear it like narrowly miss and go over top of where you're hiding, Devlin. And then she is actually going to make a run for the stairs. And gets like kind of like she just rounds the corner and starts heading up the stairs. The blue AI bot's turn because it's the last one in this initiative order runs and you can start hearing it's really hard to tell but it sounds like there's some kind of vibration in the floor like below you it's not consistent whatsoever it's very sporadic but it sounds like there might be or feels like there might be and sounds like with the vibration there might be something going on outside at the same time The blue AI approaches Brady and is just going to basically just try to grab him and kind of slam him up against these crates. And easily does so with an 18 on the dice roll. Uh, so grabs Brady and slams him up against dealing. Oh, luckily enough, only one point of damage to Brady. So he's still got the shotgun in hand, but you can see the blue AI sparks like flying out of the damage, grabs Brady and just slams his head up against these crates that he's hiding off. And one of the crates kind of rolls off the side and slams onto the floor. And that's when we head back to the omen. So what you guys think? Should we go <laughs> look for that? No, oh, I mean, if that was the plan, then I think we should be okay. But maybe we're just one of... Well, no, separating the party even more is a bad idea. It's always a bad idea. I think if we, if someone wants to go check, we should all go check. Not. Yeah. I want to go check. Then let's all go check. But if it's locked down, are they even going to let us in? Probably not. Exactly. That's true. We'd just hear about it on the news. And if he's dead, well, Dev will be remembered. At the very least, by my device. <laughs> I mean, but maybe we can catch a sight of something happening. You said yourself you like seeing dead bodies float across space, so you might get a chance to see something. Oh, dang. That is a good idea. All right. I'm sold. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are starting to exit the omen? Yes, sir. Are all of you going? No? Okay. I think so. So you guys yeah. all grab your stuff. Before you even get to like, walk out, all of a sudden those screens flash back to life. And you see that same woman there on the screen. We apologize for the inconvenience and hope you're enjoying your stay here at Kenar 62. We must apologize further as we have put all uh, port connectors on lockdown. No one is permitted to leave or enter Kenar 62 until all things are up and up and operational here within the station. No need to worry. No need to fret. Things will be taken care of shortly. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it just blips off. Oh, I guess that settles that we can't so, leave. Well, yeah. that was because we can't leave. Just so, just so you guys know, that was just for ships. It wasn't like it's not. Gonna, oh, like okay. You can still get on and off of your ship, but the sh ships, any ship that's can't docked, leave. cannot leave, and a new ship cannot <laughs> adhere, connect to gotcha. the docking bays. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's get going then. If if we mess up a lot, we can't make a run for it. I mean, I guess that is true. What's the worst that could happen? As long as he ducks, he'll be fine. 
Let's go. Let's okay. go. So you guys get out of the, the bay and start to turn and start running. Uh, are you running or are you walking casually? Like, are you guys... I'm just, I'm just walking. Just walking? Okay. Walking. <laughs> walking, yeah. okay. Not walk. drawing attention to ourselves. Yeah, it seems like there's pods and groups of people that are seem to be like whispering about. Oh, I wonder what's going on. I don't know. Did you, did you hear gunshots? I, I don't know. I just, you know, things things like that is is some of the conversation that you guys hear as you guys are walking down the hall. Um, another thing that you notice, uh, one of the the ports or one of the the airlock systems, a couple couple doors down from you guys, looks like there's a smaller vessel attached to it. From the outside of the windows, you can see it. Uh, it seems like you saw a couple people like rush into that vessel, and the door, the airlocking doors, close behind it. And it looks like they're trying to get the engines fired on that vessel. Like it seems like you can start to see like blue and flickering like energy coming from where the the back of the engines are. And it seems like for some reason they're in a panic, and they start to try to take off of Ken R sixty two. And you can see that the ship is struggling. Like it starts to, to teeter and vibrate as the engines start to glow really bright blue beside the Ken R-62. And then all of a sudden you see the airlock system, the part that attacks to the ship, starts to compromise. And the ship starts to, to break and peel. And then all of a sudden you can see like things just start shooting and flying out of the vessel. Including individuals. And one of the individuals like slams up against the glass and is going like this <laughs> and drifting across the glass on the outside. You can see the vessel completely separated itself, but the door and the latch part of the door is still connected to the airlock. The airlock never released. It just broke the ship right at the door. And it just starts to peel away and that vessel just starts slowly drifting. You can see one of the other guys is like hanging on to parts of the metal of the vessel. And you can see he must have hit something on his head because blood is just slowly like drifting off into space like this. And it looks like they're just suffocating out there. Noah runs up to the window and puts his hand on it just as uh, letting these people not be alone as they die. Mm -hmm. Got it. Hurts. I just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just keep I will wait for Noah. Much, <laughs> I will look at Noah and just say, "Do you think we can get this the the parts that they left behind?" That's what you're thinking about right now. <laughs> yeah. How, how does your mind work? It doesn't. We need to have a chat later. <laughs> These I will probably are, forget. These people are dying. All that history gone. Consciousness just whew, out of their body. Noah slowly walks away from the window and regains the group. Or oh. regains a track to where he's going. All right. Perfect. And as we do that, we head back to the refueling bay where we're at round three of what's happening here. Um, since the blue eye AI went, it will become uh, Devlin's turn. What would you like to do, Devlin? You can open up round three for us. Hmm. So I see her running. Mm -hmm. Brady just got pinned up and Cameron's yeah. coming towards me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look at Cameron and just point um, to the uh, girl. I'm just going to point like, just follow her that way. And I'm just going to stay along the side. And that would kind of put me one, two, three, four, five, kind of like right here. Just kind of okay. running along the side, but just keeping an eye on everything, but trying to coax them to keep running and everyone kind of to just kind of run away. So that way we can try and get captured, hopefully sooner or <laughs> see if things resolve sooner. Got it. While not compromising myself. Got it. Got it. Got it. Excellent. So who who upon the board would you like to go next? Um. 
Let's go with the lady. The lady? Okay. She goes ahead and moves up to where she can get a better vantage point. So she's kind of up above all this stuff. And it's going to fire another pistol shot to, to Brady, who seems to be, from where she is, he's kind of safe behind that cover. So she takes a shot. Natural 20. Ooh. <laughs> so roll, uh, roll two dice for that. First one, that's good, because the first one was only one point. Five. So six points of damage dealt. And as this bullet hits part of the neck mechanics of this AI, it all of a sudden goes... And its head jerks to the side abruptly. Sparks begin to spray out from where the shot hit. And you can hear... Critical, critic, critical, crit, crit. Crit, crit, critical failure. Crit, crit, critical failure. And all of a sudden, that blue light just vanishes out. And the AI falls to the floor. <laughs> but it's at that time. That in from some of the sliding doors in the bottom part of the underneath part of the garage area, two armed, what looks to be Xanta's guards, mosey into the bay. And they just pull guns up towards you and Cameron, and they just start yelling, Nobody move! Stop! And that's what they do on their turn. Brady, on his turn, moves back and just hides and stays out of sight from where they can't see him. Cameron panics. He holds up his hands. He's not really sure what to do. He looks over towards you. And he goes and he starts to run and he gets kind of behind these barrels and things over here onto the side. So right now, the only, like, person within eyesight of these two armed individuals is you, Devlin. Where are they on the map again? I will put them. They're kind of under the walkway, but let me grab a token for them, and I will put them there for you so you guys can, so you can see. Which I will say they're kind of, like, in this area. There's two of them here. Gotcha. Turn. So it's my turn? <clears throat> well, that was the end of round three. Okay. So we go back to the halls. <laughs> and the party is walking down. You, you kind of reach a junction walking down the hall where another hall meets this hall, a smaller hall that meets this larger hall down the side of the, the vessel. And on your way to the fueling port, you see what looks to be four of Xanta's guards. Not running, but, uh, you know, like a jog. Go kind of like get right in front of you like you guys are walking and all of a sudden they just pop out and start heading that direction okay so there might be something going on with dev <laughs> it's probably not a good it's not probably not a good thing that they needed reinforcements I mean, what should we go a little faster should we wait i mean i feel like if we're running if we're gonna run towards that direction we might arouse a little too much suspicion we want to I save dev but not get ourselves also captured also oh, something uh plan? what was that does anybody remember the plan well it was supposed to be them getting captured and them just letting devlin go so, something else to keep in mind is if we 
get involved that is not a part of the plans so that means our deal with Xanta is probably void and then we probably get in trouble also yeah so just... didn't, didn't you talk to Santa yes Manta? Santa Manta yes <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually bonded over that actually did you yeah and you 100% sure death's gonna be okay yes Right. What do you think? I mean, a little. Well, maybe about like ninety-five percent now that they needed backup, because they were supposed to just take them like right away and no real issues. So needing backup is kind of issues. Yeah. So I think he has like a ninety-five percent chance now. Well, we don't keep in mind. We don't know what he might have done, what other also, people might have done. So. You know, it, for as far as we know, maybe it's not even related to death. I mean, it, you know, it's guaranteed 100% probably is. Yeah. But <laughs> some other stuff might have happened that was out of his control or out of the control of the group or we don't know. As far as you know, maybe death just blew a hole in a wall and now there's a freaking vacuum out there sucking everybody in. That means probably Dev's dead then. Well, but we don't know. That's just, you know, an example. Oh, I hope not. I like the guy. Oh, me too. Dev is my best friend. And you're just going to let him possibly get hurt? Well, that was the plan to get him captured. That's what he wanted, I guess. Captured and hurt are two very different things. Well, I don't know if he's getting hurt. Which is why we're going to find out. We're not going to get involved. We're just going to see. Yes. No, that's fine. Uh, I'm okay with that. And get involved if we need to. And <laughs> Noah starts walking off. <laughs> 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 so we will transition back. <clears throat> to Dev's situation. Uh, Dev, the security are going to take the first uh, round, the first go of round four. They slowly move towards you, weapons trained on you. One has a pistol, one has what looks to be some kind of compact machine gun. And they're just kind of like looking at you, pointing their, their weapons at you and says, drop to the floor now, drop to the floor. And it becomes your turn. All right. Um... I'm going to go with, I'm going to start, to, I'm like, okay, okay, and start to go down, and I'm going to point, like, above them, like, look out, pipe, to try and distract them, and, okay. then, and then try and run behind the bins. Okay. Make a savvy check for me, please. That's a d20, right? D20 roll, add your, your savvy. Minus three. Come on. <laughs> Minus three? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to use a void point. Oh, there you go. Make your roll with advantage. I've already maxed out on all those. Yeah, make your roll with advantage. Oh, where's the other one? Okay. Using both of my new, new dice here. All right. Hopefully they roll well for you. <laughs> so 16 minus 3 is 13. And then the other one's 11 minus 3 is... Eight. All right. Well, you take the advantage. So 16 minus 3 is a 13, which beats a 12, which is what you needed to succeed. So they both kind of look up immediately. Uh, their weapons kind of train up where you pointed. And you take that opportunity to kind of run behind the crates. Yep, just right there. Just right behind the crates and kind of duck down. Okay. Um, whose turn would you like to take next? You've got Brady, uh, Kazra, and Cameron. Um, I'm going to go with Kazra. Um, Kazra seemingly thinks, uh, she's, she's going to try to slip out of here, but when she gets, or she can only get about that far when she gets to the, 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 the bay doors up here, uh, they are locked down. So when she gets to the top, she tries to like hit some of the buttons that are on the panel next to the sliding doors and they don't open. 
That will pass it on to Brady's turn. Brady still doesn't think that he can be seen. So he is just kind of holding, hunkering down back behind those crates. And he's got the shotgun ready. And Cameron uses his turn to look towards you, Devil. And he's like, what do, we, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I can't, I can't get caught. I can't get caught. He just starts like panicking. And he also has someone bring him food. What? <laughs> How is that? There's no <laughs> way someone DoorDash could get there in time. <laughs> is there like a drone dropping it in? Maybe that's, that's it. This drone just goes, and just drops this little. <laughs> oh, I, for, I forgot I even ordered this. <laughs> <laughs> probably tacos and they're all shattered that's, like <laughs> yeah, that's right that's right yeah it's the worst it's scenario just, it's just taco salad now that's that's yeah. all it is <laughs> <laughs> all right uh but so basically he just kind of uses his turn he's like you know punting back to you like he's 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 without his weapon yeah i'd probably just say we just got to get out of here you got to make a run for it <laughs> okay um Let's do, we'll do one more round here. Um, Kazra's going to make some attempts to try to hack this door. Depends on what their tech score is. Let me see. She might be successful. It's right on the bubble. She's able to do it. That sliding glass door opens. As she takes the first turn. And... As that sliding glass door opens, she just sees that there are four armed security just down the hall. And you guys, the rest of you, see from about 30 feet behind these security, you can see that door open. And you can see an individual holding a smoking pistol. The doors open from the refueling bay. <laughs> this is this is what goes this is what goes on in my house, guys. Like, yeah, this is this is this is a Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but there was a unicorn right behind you. Uh, yeah. I, um... Yeah. That's it. Sorry, YouTube. This is, that was great. A day in the life of Mike in Michael's house. This is, this is it. Alright. So, Kazra's turn ends. That's where she's gonna stop. And, uh... Devlin... I'm going to pass the initiative count to you. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm going to run probably right over here to hide a little bit further and kind of scoot around the side um, okay. and just kind of look at Cameron and be like, we got to make a run for it. Are you ready? He kind of looks at you. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got this. I'll cover you. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. So is that your turn? That's all I'm gonna do. Okay, whose turn who's are you gonna pass it to? Uh I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Brady. Brady. Brady's looking over to where you guys are, and he can see that you guys are like talking, but He's all the way across the, the bay. So he's having a hard time, like, figuring out what you guys are saying. He's going to stay hunkered down. He's actually going to use that. He's holding that shotgun over kind of towards the middle of the bay, towards where he can hear these other voices of the security. Um, and honestly, this is, like, underneath area. So basically, he's going to kind of go behind the crates here. 
You got just gotta imagine that he's like still on the first floor. He's not on the on the top. He's just gonna stay there, and he'll pass on to Cameron, who you told him to make a run for it. Did you give him any kind of directional, like where you wanted him to run? Nope. I would just imply for him to try and escape, but. I'm not giving direct orders, really. I just kind of say it in general, hoping that he takes their attention. Okay. Yeah, he'll he'll use his turn to kind of run up here and put his back up against this crate, and those security will go next, and they kind of swiftly, like, look back down. It's like, what's no stupid pipe? And, uh... <laughs> and they start kind of slowly making their way back in that same direction, where it seemingly you have flip-flop positions with Cameron... And they didn't see that happen. So they're kind of coming up and they're slowly approaching. They haven't haven't pulled triggers yet. They're not they're not shooting, but they're approaching. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make everyone a part a part of this combat. Because you guys are all kind of now level with what is all going on. So we're just gonna roll into round six. I think it's round six. Yeah, this will be round six of the combat. Because it's we haven't had any. Right now, it's not combat because nobody's fired anything, but I'm still going in turn order because it's still a confrontational hostile situation here. So, no one has surrendered yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys will just kind of have to imagine your characters are down the hall a little bit from this. And if you see where Kazra is on the map, that's where, like, the doors are on the top, top area of this refueling bay. So, at the start of this turn... Um, no one is really making a hostile action unless one of you decides to. I'm curious, have we ever we haven't have we seen this other lady? Because like we, I mean, we have now, but before this, have we seen her? You guys with the gun? Have, yeah, you guys have not. You guys don't know okay. who that is. There's a blonde-haired woman seems to be coming out of there. She has like her her hair is shaved on one side and it kind of falls down. Uh, it's kind of long down to about mid shoulders. Um, looks like she's got some, like, blue flashing, like, almost, like, symbols and stuff, like, tattooed or something on her face. Wearing a long brown I'm, trench coat. I'm going to, as soon as I see that person, because I'm, like, you know, I'm very, uh, unhealthy. I'm just gonna yell out, GUN! <laughs> so the, the guards that we were that the, she came out between here's me yo gun <laughs> okay <laughs> okay i'm just gonna point towards her okay so you're just yelling gun and pointing and yeah then i'm gonna hide okay the <laughs> only place shot the only place you can really hide there is like a docking bay that kind of ducks into the hallway a little bit you can kind of sure you know like Perfect. position yourself in that docking bay a little bit yeah i just don't want to get shot okay you got it? <laughs> so, Manta yells gun and dives into a docking bay. <laughs> uh, Manta, you can choose who goes next. Uh, can, I, can I... You can pick anybody. Can I choose those guards? The guards that are outside? No, the four. Yeah, the four that were that in between us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll choose, I'll choose I'll say one you can, of the guards. You can choose one of the guards. Yeah, I'll choose that one guard, of the guards. The guard immediately hears you yell out. They all, the, all the guards kind of stop at that point, hearing that. And the one guard that you you had requested go, he has like one of the the little machine gun type thing, pulls it up, starts training it on her, and says, "Drop the weapon! Drop the weapon!" Just shouts out. Um. The other guards all take their turns as well as the, I'm just going to pass them along the guards and they all do kind of the same thing. They they block the hall, like putting like all four of them across the hall. And they're all like training their weapons towards this woman. And I will pass the turn to Andronima. I was going to yell hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. <laughs> I'm just I'm taking Mantha's lead. I'm just going to, like, look at the guards, look at the woman, be like, sorry, and then hide. <laughs> You're going to hide, too? The only, yeah. the only space to hide is that same docking bay that Mantha's in. So you're just going to kind of tuck up next to Mantha, <laughs> okay? Hi. 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 <laughs> and who would you like to pass the turn to? 
I'll pass it to Noah. Okay. This may be a little complicated, but I'm going to try it. It okay. may take a few moves, but we'll see what I can do. Okay. Um, who's in the hall with me? me. Uh, Don's with me, right? Don's standing yeah. in the hall with you. About 10 feet in front of you, the armed guards are facing away from you, pointing their guns 30 feet down the hall to a woman who just opened the door from the garage refueling bay, holding a pistol. I'm going to whisper to Don to punch me in the face. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> okay. And that's what you're going to do on your turn? I I have kind of a plan, but yes. Okay. I have something I want to say after he punches me. Okay. If he punches me. Okay, so is, so who so are you gonna pass the turn to Don next, or are you gonna pass it? Some, okay, can I pass and ready what I want to say, or uh, do I wait next? I'll time? just you can say it right after. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll pass it to Don. Don, uh, Noah just whispered to you, "Punch me." <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna no, punch um, him? No, no. Um, I'm gonna look at him. And be like, why? What's your plan? <laughs> I'm gonna get us a gun. Okay. You sure, bro? No consequences. I will not hold it against you. <laughs> Alright, so yes, I will punch him right in the face. Alright, roll a d20 for me. Oh, Add yes. your body to it. Yes, <laughs> What's your defense rating, Noah? Uh, let me bring up my sheet. I, and since he's asking you to do it, I will give you advantage on this roll. Because he doesn't 12. look like he's trying to dodge you. Just two rolls. Two rolls take the higher. Yep, 12. Defense rating is 12. Uh, 11. On the highest roll? You got 11? All right. With my body. So he does punch you, Noah. But he his hand kind of gets caught on his trench coat a little bit and holds... Holds him back from getting the whole impact involved. So it just kind of like grazes your face. So you don't take any damage. He definitely, he sold it. It was like WWE punch. And <laughs> it'll leave any type of mark on me, I hope, I would hope. What's that? No damage, but like yeah, a bruise. It doesn't do uh, it. It doesn't leave a mark at all. Mm -mm. Well, Noah will hold his face where it was punched and yell out <laughs> to the guard. Uh, that's the one who mugged me. She stole my gun. And I point at uh, Kazra. Okay, so Don punched you. You hold your hand over the over where he punched you, because they weren't uh, looking at us. Oh, good, good point, good point, good point. Okay, so Don, technically that was your turn. So who would you pass the turn to? The only the oh. only people that we have left are the people that were kind of like in the refueling bay. So Dev and we got Dev. I'll, you got um. I'll give it to Dev. Okay, Dev. Wanted to go last. Give <laughs> <laughs> me a note. Ah, <laughs> uh, would I be able to see Brady from here, or is he completely hidden? You cannot see Brady at all from where you're at. You saw him crawl behind those crates. You just saw his feet just disappear behind the crates. So technically, he can't see me. He can't see you. At least you don't think he can. Um, what do I want to do here? You know what? I'm just going to kind of look at uh, Cameron and just go, hey, the minute you get a chance, I think Brady's going to distract him on the other side. I saw him disappear into the back. If you get a chance, you run for it and get past those guards. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna get some things over here to distract them and throw um, just some tools together just so that way I can throw it at him and try and distract them. And I'm just going to look around and see if there's any parts that I can just kind of grab the scrounge to kind of... Whether it be oh, yeah. a wrench, a bolt, whatever, just kind of grab a few things, just kind of hold and just kind of like snowballs, just holding a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. Just in case I need them. But that's going to be really it. And I'm just going to kind of stay in the same spot, just kind of keeping an eye out. Okay. You got it. 
Um, and then I would pass to Cameron. Pass to Cameron. Okay. Cameron just kind of looks over the, the looks behind the boxes and sees that these security are basically closing in on his location. Uh, you can see he's sweating. He's panicking from your location. Um, but is almost frozen in fear right now of, of getting caught. And he doesn't really do anything. He just holds there as the security keeps on closing in on his position. Um, the security is going to go next. And they basically move in on Cameron and rush him. And one is going to try to basically like jump on top of him and they're going to try to basically pin him down. Uh, that will succeed. So as you're getting gathering all these tools, you can hear that's one get him. And all of a sudden you see like these two guards quickly, like one of them like shoulders his weapon dives over top of the box and tackles down on Cameron. Cameron goes to like last ditch effort, start crawling away. And then the other one just like leaps down on top of him, and pulls his arms back behind his back. And you can see one of them is getting some kind of a mechanical device out from a pouch that he was wearing on the side. Um, and that ends their turn. Uh, Brady seeing that uh, makes a run for it. And starts to run up the stairs. <laughs> um, Kazra, seeing that there's four guards there, I'll roll to see what she does. <laughs> Slowly begins to hold up the other hand still got the pistol in the other it starts to hold up the hands and that's all she does bring us to the next next round Brady's gonna go first and he continues to run And he gets up to here and immediately can see the back of Kazra holding her hands up like this. And he stops in his tracks holding the shotgun and looks left, looks right. Looks like he's breathing heavy and sweating it out. Going to pass the turn to... Uh, we'll pass the turn to Noah. Noah's going to start walking towards the guards, acting really angry. Like, oh, yeah. you thought you can get away with it, didn't you? I will have my gun back now. And holds out his hand for the gun. Make a savvy check with advantage. Savvy check with advantage. So that's okay. Because of, of Dawn's help last round. That's a 10 on the first roll. So plus two is 12. Mm -hmm. And a 14 plus two is 16. That's enough to succeed. Uh, so you're, you're walking up to Kazra and you're holding your hand out, uh, looking around and seeing what is happening. And she's not really sure what you're talking about. She has no idea, but seeing that it seems that security are gun like have their guns like trained on her. She takes the pistol down and hands it into your hands. I give her a slight wink and I holster the pistol in my pocket. She looks at you and under her breath, she's like, I'm going to get that back later. Noah turns around, returns to the group. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Who would you like to turn the pass the turn off to? Uh, Manta. Manta, you can. Oh, I'm staying put. You're staying put? Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Noah, you can I'm add a, uh, you can add a uh, pistol to your inventory. Thank you. <laughs> So Manta, who would you who would you like to pass the turn to? 
I, I will give it to Tara since okay. she's right uh, next to me. Andronima is next up. Yes, yes, Andromeda, yeah. sorry. Yeah, you're all good. I will look at that as Bonoa like does all the stealing stuff and I'm gonna be like, ah, that's smart. And I'll stay here. I'll pass okay. the dawn. <laughs> pass the dawn? Okay, dawn's go. Yeah. Anything you're doing, Don? Uh, yes, actually I am. Um you probably see Noah as he passes the guards. Probably has a huge smile on his face as he's carrying a pistol back to you. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> am I, am I <laughs> close enough to walk with Brady or around Brady's? Uh, no, you're not close enough. Like you could get up to Kazra, but not to Brady. Okay. Uh... Like you guys can't technically see Brady yet from where you are. You have no idea he's back there. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to get close enough to Kassara. Meanwhile, giving a high five to my boy Noah over here. <laughs> and... <laughs> he does have a pistol, right? What's that? Yes, Kassara has a pistol. She's not anymore. Not anymore. Noah used the situation to his advantage and was uh, able to get it oh, from her. Oh, it was her. Kassara. It wasn't the other one. It was okay. Kassara, yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna give a high five to Noah and just stay with him. I'm okay. not even going to do anything. Okay. I'm just going to stay up and look. See what happens. You got it. So... And I'll give it to... Let's give it to Brady. Brady. Okay. <clears throat> Brady is going to go around here. And he hides. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> and Brady's going to pass the turn to Devlin. All right, seeing this go down, are there any, like, empty barrels or boxes big enough around for me to hop into? <laughs> I'm going to Metal Gear Solid this, okay? <laughs> uh, yes, in fact, there is one no more than 15 feet away from you that you think you could crawl inside. Can I get to that this turn? Yes. All right, I'm doing that. I'm going to kind of drop all the stuff trying to slowly put it down as i kind of crawl to it and then just kind of like hop inside the barrel and just kind of sit there and just go quiet oh yeah it reeks in here it smells okay. of grease and all kinds of other nastiness but yeah i'll take a little bit and kind of like smear my face so it kind of covers <laughs> me up just a little bit more <laughs> yes so that way there's no reflection. I kind of take my glasses though right before it and I kind of like tuck them right inside. <laughs> okay. And seal it up just so that way I don't get anything on them. And okay. uh, just kind of cover up so that way there's no reflection. Just kind of keep my head down. Okay. So if someone opens it up, hopefully they don't recognize that I'm there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you're hiding. Uh, anybody in particular you're gonna pass the turn to? Uh, I'm gonna pass it to the guards. Pass it to the guards, okay. Uh, they use their turn to basically, they latch on these mechanical cuffs behind Cameron. So they've got him re completely restrained now. And they yank him up to his feet. And they start escorting him. And basically Cameron's turn is basically, he's just getting escorted. You can hear him panicking through the, the sides of the, the barrel that you're in. Uh, but... That's pretty much all you can tell from inside the barrel. Works for me. <laughs> and basically we'll take us out of initiative for this. But what happens is Brady goes and hides and disappears. Just like you did, Devlin. They escort... They escort Cameron up the stairs where the other four guards converge on Kazra, who's also then restrained and cuffed. And... You guys both wreck or you guys all above are seeing this happening as it looks as if this blonde haired woman and the person you recognize as Cameron, you guys know this individual, is cuffed behind his back, looks like he's panicked and sweating, and is being escorted by two armed 
security, which now totals six upstairs for these two individuals that they have captured. And then one of the guards is like, oh, <laughs> you two really thought you could do pull something on us, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was awful. Terrible attempt. And one of them's like, oh, yes. <laughs> Xanta's got a nice place for you. Oh, yeah. And they just start kind of like escorting them. And they look like they're turning around. Looks like they're going to escort them back down the hallway. Anybody would like to do anything or say anything? Noah salutes them as they walk by. Okay. <laughs> the woman, like, looks at you and scoffs. <laughs> she definitely, like, you can tell, like, in that moment, like, she's definitely, like, looking you over and, and keeping track of who she's, who she's seeing as she's escorted out. Would I have seen where Brady had hid... Or would I not have been able to? You would not have been able to. So you have no idea okay. where Brady went. But I'm just staying in the can. Okay, <laughs> staying in the can. All right. Um, so. Let's get you a new image to look at. They escort out. Some time passes. Devlin, you wait. Five. Ten. How, how long would you wait? Uh, I would be very patient. I would okay. wait as long until I like heard someone coming for me, calling for me, or I start hearing like normal sounds of working coming back. Like I would, I know it's mm -hmm. going to be a while with security going around potentially. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been through it once, so I'm going to play it safe. Okay. Are we clear to go inside that big room? You could. No, would walk in. Okay. Um, question for you, Michael. Did Mia give any of us that vape drive? Somebody has it. I don't remember who. She gave it to you guys as a group. I'm just not sure who's currently holding it. Wasn't me. I'll go ahead and say I held on to it. Okay. Yeah. Would I see that inactive AI droid on the floor? Mm hmm. You would. Do I see anyone else around? Not currently. I mean, there are people nope. around, but they're, like, still in shock of what just ensued. Like, a gunfight just happened in the middle of the, the refueling bay. Like, the worst nope. place ever to have a gunfight in this whole <laughs> spaceport. <laughs> I was just very discreetly, hopefully, going to try to plug in the drive on the deactivated droid. Our AI. Okay. So, there is a uh, plug-in port uh, on the back of kind of like the back se back center of the the unit but it doesn't seem to do anything i mean it fits in but nothing seems to be taking place i'll look back at the group should i leave it in maybe we should try and take this with us i don't know I don't it will think definitely that... be noticed if if we're leaving with this. This one's heavy too. It's just probably off, so I don't know if it will transmit anything. Devlin, it's hard to hear, but you can start hearing some voices you recognize in the barrel. I would <laughs> slowly, carefully, kind of like lift the <laughs> lid just up. <laughs> Yes. Just so I can kind of hear what's going on and see if I can recognize those voices and just kind of yeah. listen for the conversation of what's going on. Yeah, you can see your friends are gathered around the unit that is just sitting on the floor. I would probably slowly get out and kind of look around to see if there's any security guards or anyone else. And if we were looking back at the map, I'd kind of like circle slowly back around to like the entrance mm -hmm. if I could and kind of magically walk out like, oh, hey, guys, what are you guys doing here? Like type thing, to try and play off that. I just wasn't involved in any of that while covered in whatever nastiness that is me. Perfect. Yeah. Um, as you're walking by, the, the sliding doors do open 
and you see two security guards kind of like walk in right as you're like walking around but they're like are right, you you okay yeah no i uh one of the barrels took a dump on me yeah you look filthy motion. You're a filthy mess i know it's um one of the barrels somewhat during the commotion just toppled over on me and got stuck and i finally made it out and just oh i gotta go shower you you be careful there's some crazy folk out here just firing away so just watch what you're doing firing away i couldn't hear anything inside that barrel it was oh. like my ears are completely filled can you look inside them oh that's <laughs> no, I I'm, not, I'm not looking in your ear man oh and he just like walks away <laughs> <laughs> Do we see him yet? Oh yeah, you see him. See Andromeda? He is not floating out in space. He's alive. Hey Devlin. I just kind of look like, hey guys. Apparently there was a there was a skirmish or something around here. I don't yeah. know if you guys uh you guys heard or saw anything. I got stuck in a barrel. Would you believe it? Yeah. We can smell it. Yeah. And then I'd kind of like look around. To see if anyone was around, and I just kind of like look at Manta and just go, "That did not go as planned." You're okay though. You didn't follow the plan. And the whole <laughs> place is on lockdown now. <laughs> well, the only thing I saw was, and I just kind of keep it quiet. Would just be like, "I I saw uh, Cameron get taken down by the guards." I don't I don't know what happened to the rest. Well, whoever she was, she's out of the picture right now, and Noah flashes the pistol to him. She? Are you talking about maybe? No. I was say, I, I swore she got taken, but um... Oh, the other... Yes, yes, I remember now. Sorry, things just happened so fast. Um... But yeah, I saw her go towards the door, and I saw Brady go into some boxes, but I have no idea where either of them went. Hmm. Well, she'll be a problem for a later day. Do you know her? No. That was my first time seeing her. You said Brady is still here? Uh, no, I just saw him go into the bins over there, and then that was the last I saw him. And after that, I saw the guards closing in, and I just hid in a barrel as fast as I could. That's I have no wild. idea what happened. We didn't see him get taken, so I'm assuming he get made it out. Are we still in the bins? Bubbly. Are there still guards here? Uh, there are periodically guards passing by in groups of, or pairs. Um, they seem to be just kind of wandering around, actively searching. Noah will go and ask them, or tell them they he thinks he heard something rustling around those bins over there. Okay, and that would have that would have been like the first set of bins where he jumped into, not where he ran over and hid, because that's the last time I saw him. Whereas I saw his feet disappear. Yeah. Okay. So it wouldn't be where he was actually hiding. Okay. Yeah. One of the security like looks over. And says, yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go over and check it out. Uh, thank you. And he heads over and starts. In that direction. Um, you do notice uh, Mr. Morgan, who runs this garage area, this refueling station, comes out with his iPad. He looks frantic, like he's just been hiding as well from all the chaos. And he sees the AI unit laying on the floor. And is like, oh, no. Santa's going to be Can you so fix upset. It? Can I fix this? Oh, gosh. Fixing really isn't my style. It's not what I do. I put people in the position to fix things. Ugh. Can anyone fix it? I'm pretty handy. It, Noah, is the is the thing still in the port and it's back? Okay. Yep. Well, I'm sure I'm sure one of the other units is on its way to take this one back. Anything I can do to help? No, I don't think uh, I don't think there's anything that you can do. Get yourself out of here. Calm yourselves down. 
I need to... Uh, I need a drink. <laughs> I'm just going to look at him and just kind of pull out my glasses that are still pristine. and be like, you don't have to tell me twice. Let's... <laughs> Just Ouch. everything else is nasty, and I just have clean glasses, and then just kind of, should we should we go? Yes. Yeah, should leave. Okay. So you guys are gonna, you're leaving the, the port in the AI unit and walking away. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys make your way back to the Omen. All right. Uh, is there guys... any communal showers along the way? <laughs> there, there are places where you can shower. Yes, I would definitely say I, I need to make a stop there and, and get some uh, clothes cleaned. If there's a, if we have a chance for that. Okay. Not that you don't mind my smell or anything. A shower would cost you a hollow. To get your clothes cleaned on top of that would cost you. Uh, it'd be a total of five hollows. Woo. <laughs> Well, I have 26, <laughs> so I am definitely going to do that. Okay. So I'll go down to 21. And it will take you a little bit of time. So That's fine with me. I have all the time in the world. <laughs> so you kind of break off with the group telling them you're going to go uh, use the showers. Yep, get cleaned up. Okay. And the rest of you returning to the Omen? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So you guys make your way back to the ship. You have you see that docking has still been on is still on lockdown. But the refueling station is it was on like a temporary lockdown for a while and they have re reopened it. Based off of your information from the inside of your ship and all the monitors and things that are around the station. The adventure is yours. What do you guys want to do when you get back? Michael, I forget. Did um, Xanta say that he would contact me after the whole thing went down, or should I go? Oh, good question. That was a month ago, and I forgot too. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Let's just pick I mean, one. It'd probably and make go the most. It. It, it'd probably make the most sense that he would contact me. I'm, I'm just assuming. Yeah, yeah. I'll, we'll say that. Yeah, we'll say that okay. he would contact you whenever he was ready and. Okay, yeah. so then I, I'm just going to hang out at the ship waiting to hear, so. Okay. Um, you do, as you guys are kind of hanging out for a while, you do see that the monitors, uh, the, the screens kind of flicker to life within the omen. And you can see that kind of like what they do on television when they're looking for uh, escaped convicts or criminals posting their images and pictures all over media. Uh, you do notice that they are starting to flash images of Brady's face, of Devlin's face. Um, and another individual who you do not recognize, kind of like stouter uh, looking muscular face with short kind of spiky blonde hair. Looks to have, like, a few scars on the side of his head. And the name listed underneath it is a name called... His name is Zand. These are three individuals that are currently being sought after. Is Would there... I see this in the shower? Actually, you see it, like, when you get out of the shower, you look up at one of the monitors uh, in the kind of, like, locker room area where you're kind of getting your, your clothes, like, pressed and dressed, and all of a sudden, like, there's your face on the screen, Devlin. Is his name included with it? It is. So they know he's linked to our ship. Yeah. It probably wouldn't take him long to figure that out. <laughs> And then I'm aware that I'm supposed to get arrested, right? And be part of the whole arrest? I mean, I think I that's what you... the plan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are mm -hmm. aware that that was part of the plan. But the plan has shifted a little bit, so... Yeah, though. <laughs> is, is there a reward for information mm -hmm. on any of these people? It doesn't list one. Okay. I would probably, knowing that Brady didn't get caught after they told me, 
Um, I would take my time getting ready, but kind of like watching my back, my back because I don't want to get like just slammed down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would kind of look for guards uh, and just kind of look for some and then kind of go up to them and be like, you're looking for me. I'm part of the group. Um, take me in, but make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> So the whole time. <laughs> hey, I wasn't about to get shot. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, like one of the guards that you approach as as you walk up into the hallway, like kind of like grabs and twists your arm and slams you up against the wall face first a little bit, just roughs you up, and then kind of like whispers to you, uh, was that good? Yeah, yeah just a <laughs> little bit easier on the thumb. Oh, 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 right, right. And then he slams these uh, cuffs on you that seem to have this, like, re- residual kind of, like, pinkish electricity kind of zapping off of them a little bit as he wraps them around your, your wrists. And then I would whisper to him to uh, let my ship, the Omen, and people know that um, I just got wrapped up. One of the guards is like, yeah, 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 we'll have it covered. <laughs> and they start escorting you down the hall in the opposite direction of your ship. Works for me. <laughs> um, what are the rest of you doing? Anything in particular? Still waiting? I'm going to go up to Manta and be like, maybe you should talk to, try to contact Santa and make sure the death is going to be okay. I, well, I mean, he said he was going to contact me, so. <laughs> you know, we don't really care about this death guy, do we? Oh, we, we do. We took so long to get to where he was. We saw people die in space. Now we see him getting caught or being looked for. And we just kind of wait here. Well, he, he was supposed to be, you know, he was supposed to be arrested with them. That was that was the plan. So that's probably why his face is up there. Because we're keeping we're keeping the idea that we can be trusted on the, you know, keeping our street cred up. Is it called street cred anymore? Hyperlane cred? Street hollows. Street hollows. Space cred. <laughs> Space hollows. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll let you take over, and hopefully we don't lose another member. I think Dev is going to be okay. He's smart, and he knows how to take care of himself. I agree. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't see for all the other people that are on the screen, though. I don't think Brady or Cameron or all of them are going to be okay. I mean, I don't uh, know about the new probably woman. dead. Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't know about Brady because apparently he didn't get captured. No. Yeah, maybe man's going to escape. Who knows? Just got to lay low for a little bit and I guess we'll just pass along. Oh. Does Brady know where our ship is? Oh, shit. I think they, he does. They've been here. Yeah. Well, if anybody I'm comes, I'm gonna guard the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if anyone comes knocking, we're only opening it up for like Xanta, but not for Brady. As you guys are having this conversation, you do notice that they update the video feed, and it does no longer have the face of Devlin on it. It only hey. includes Brady and Zan. See, he's totally fine. Or dead. Oh, dear. <laughs> I doubt he's dead. You have a very good connection with Santa. You trust him a little too much. I mean, I, I just think that uh, he knows a good crew when he comes across one. Can't be a good crew. We never met him. He only knows you. That's true. Oh, we're kind of uh, try. This is like a tryout. It's getting us mm. more work down the line. Mm. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Noah? I've never had a tryout where someone got arrested before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shot. First time for everything, right? I've been in trials where people got shot. 
Did you do? Were you the that one doing the shooting? <laughs> no, I was the well, both, I guess. I was the one being shot at and the one doing the shooting. You shooting at yourself? No, I was shooting at others. They were trying to get me, so I was shooting back. What did you do? I was in the army. I told you. I just don't remember it very well. Why not? Well, when you fight for a very long time, you kind of forget why you're fighting in a little bit. And when you forget why you're fighting, all the memories and the bloodshed and the people you lost along the way all get sort of smushed together into one. So it's hard to remember the details, but I remember being shot at and shooting. I remember having friends bleed out in my hands. I remember seeing people die. Horrible. And but it doesn't you, seem... Sorry? You still think that's a beautiful thing? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It's like I have three or four separate versions of how things are. It's hard to explain, but sometimes I remember lives that I didn't live. But I don't always know the difference. So we completely have to ignore Beth and went to talk about life. <laughs> and um, and at this point, oh the, god, the, <laughs> the, the buzzer, <laughs> the buzzer from your airlock rings out throughout the omen as Noah's making his way to guard the door.